Hello and welcome to this short clip taking you through uh, some practice born Haber and lattice enthalpy style questions. So what we'll do is not only work through them but maybe have a look at some of the background information, background ideas that might help you work your way through as well. So this first one, um, fairly straightforward, uh, looking at the production or the synthesis or uh, of sodium bromide from its elements in their standard states. And uh, it asks you to use the information and the data to answer the questions which follow. Now the first one says to construct a Born-Haber cycle, or Born-Haber cycle, for sodium bromide, but it specifically says label the steps in the cycle with symbols like those used above rather than numerical values. So that means that's the explicit way in which this question wants it done. So it's worth always reading the question, and we say that all the time anyway, but in this particular case, um, if you'd missed out that um, instruction, you might risk losing marks if you didn't do it in the way they asked you to. So thinking about this, we've got atomization, we've got uh, first ionization, we've got electron affinity, and we've got lattice enthalpy. So let's have a think about the model of the born haber cycle and uh, how those different things might fit into it and in what order. So I always start off with the elements in their standard states. So if we take element 1 to be our metal, this in this case sodium, and element 2 could be the non-metal, in this case bromine, you atomise them separately because each one will carry a specific atomization energy or enthalpy. So at the top you have gaseous metal ions, the non-metal gaseous atoms, and any electrons lost during the ionisation process. Next we drop down to the gaseous non-metal atoms with a gained electron, or negative ions. And then there's uh, one more thing to put in. And that's the solid ionic lattice. Now you'll notice I haven't populated this with any arrows yet. That's where I wanted to show you how to use the, uh, the, um, the symbols like the question is asking you to do. So I haven't started doing the question yet. I'm just taking you through the ways in which you'd construct a born neighbor cycle. So on each line I've written out what is going to exist, what species are going to exist on that line. So now what you might want to do is take a moment to get a scrap of paper and scribble down this basic model. So then what we'll do is we'll change all the wording into the species that apply in this particular question's case. So changing all of those worded descriptions into symbols, this is what we've got. So you start off by atomizing your sodium, then you atomize your bromine, then you ionize your sodium, and then you've got your electron affinity of your bromine, and then you've got uh, the drop-down, which is your, uh, your lattice enthalpy. So let's put in the symbols like they wanted us to do. So I'm going to do that in a slightly different colour now. So it would look something like that. Now there's obviously one missing uh, down at the bottom. That was not in the list of things we had to label. But I'm going to put it in, in a different colour again, so you can see that it's distinct from the ones we had to do in the question. And that will be the enthalpy of formation of sodium bromide. So, um, let's see what the rest of the question wants us to do. I'd imagine it's some sort of calculation to do with this. So to do this, we need to go to the next page. So you might want to jot this down on your copy, or just pop it on a piece of paper, and we can go to the next page, and the question uh, on the next page will tell us what to do. So as we expected, it said, use the data above and the Bornheimer cycle in part A to calculate the enthalpy of formation of sodium bromide. That was the one that we, um, that we put in in blue uh, to show us. So looking at a very, very simplified Bornheimer sketch on the right-hand side of the screen, you can see where delta FH fits in. And according to Hess's law, that would mean we have to work out an indirect route. So it's all of these ones added up. So putting the values in from the previous page, so that eventually gives us minus 367 kilojoules per mole. Now if you're quite careful here that you're not mixing up your minuses and your pluses. So you can see that the blue arrow follows the direction of all the black arrows, so I didn't change any of the signs because I'm not going against any of the black arrow's directions. So the next question, let's bring that down a bit. 
It says the tables below show values for the lattice enthalpy of the metal chlorides of the group 1 and group 2 metals. It asks you to define lattice enthalpy. So with, with definitions like this you have to be quite careful to get exactly the right wording. So it's the enthalpy change when one mole of a solid ionic lattice is formed from its gaseous ions. OK, so on the next one, it asks you to write the chemical equation uh, for the reaction whose enthalpy change is equal to the lattice enthalpy of NaCl. So what you've got to do here is think about the definition of lattice enthalpy. Now, because the definition of lattice enthalpy is the formation of one mole of a solid ionic lattice from its constituent gaseous ions, you have to make sure all of those um, components of that worded definition are represented in your equation somewhere. So let's have a look. So you can see where I've highlighted the ions, the fact they're gaseous, and the fact that the sodium chloride lattice that's formed is a solid. So the next part wants us to explain in terms of the effects of ionic radius and charge why the lattice enthalpy of the group 1 metal chloride decreases from LiCl to CsCl, so from lithium chloride down to cesium chloride. So moving the page down so we can actually do that, yet yeah, keeping the data visible. What we've got to look at here um, is first of all the trend. So let's look at the trend. So obviously the lattice enthalpy is decreasing, so it's becoming uh, less exothermic. So it's important we sort of say it in those terms, it's less exothermic. So what's happening in terms of the ionic radius? Well, the ionic radius is increasing, but the uh, charge is staying the same because they're all group 1 metals, aren't they? So they're all going to be plus 1. So now we've got to try and explain how those two things uh, lead to the lattice enthalpy of the group 1 metal chloride decreasing. So the increase in ionic radius, yet the same overall charge on the cation, means that attraction between the cation and the anion is weaker. So as such, less energy is needed to overcome the electrostatic attractions between them. So because that was three marks, I thought I'd go into a bit more detail to try and justify where those marks might come from. So let's move the page down to check if there's any more questions that we need to answer on this screen. So having checked the original script, it doesn't seem there's anything more on this page, so we can go straight on to the next one. So although if you've got this script in front of you, you'll be able to use the table to have a think about this next one, it shouldn't be too difficult because we can think about things like charge and size. So if we consider that uh, magnesium is in group 2, uh, so it's going to be a 2 plus ion. Let's collect our information together first. So magnesium forms a 2 plus ion, but because it's in the same period, same row, sodium, it'll tend to pull in its remaining electrons more tightly because it's lost two of them. It's got an extra proton as well, so therefore more nuclear charge, same shielding, smaller ionic radius. So magnesium forms cations with a higher, higher charge, so greater attraction for the chloride ion. In addition, the Mg2 plus cation in MgCl2 has a smaller radius than Na plus, so as such the attractions between oppositely charged ions in MgCl2 are stronger than those in NaCl. The result of this is that it takes more energy to overcome the electrostatic attractions in magnesium chloride than it does to overcome the electrostatic attractions in sodium chloride. So let's move the page down. It looks like we've got some data to deal with, possibly a born hybrid cycle. Well, definitely a born hybrid cycle because it actually says it. I didn't read that before speaking. So the first thing is to define using an equation with MgCl2 as an example what is meant by the term lattice enthalpy. Now it's interesting they want an equation with MgCl2 as an example. So the first thing to do is to put the equation down, because that's what they told us to do, and then define what's meant by the term. So literally just that isn't enough. You've got to say it in words as well. 
because define using an equation means do the definition and support what you're saying with an equation. So if the enthalpy change when one mole of a solid ionic lattice is formed from its, from its constituent gaseous ions under standard conditions. So the next thing to do is to construct a Born-Haber cycle. So I'm just thinking how to do this, I'm running out of space a little bit here. Um, let's write down a couple of them on the right hand side, that's what I'll do. Give me, give me two seconds and I'll sort it out for you. So that's now created some room for us to do our Bornhaber cycle. So we've got the formation enthalpy of magnesium chloride, the atomization enthalpy of magnesium and the first ionization energy of magnesium. Then we've got the remaining three up on the table. So using our model that we used before, so we've now got the species in the correct places with their correct state symbols. Now all we have to do is populate them with the arrows. So now we can label up each of the processes properly uh, with their actual up-to-date 2015 specification way of writing them. So obviously what we want to work out is the black arrow, the delta LEH for magnesium chloride, because that's what it tells us to do. What we've been doing so far is what's highlighted in purple. We've done the state symbols, now we're trying to work out the lattice enthalpy. So to do this we have to find an alternative route. So we use the blue one. And that's because we have the data for this one. So what we do is we put in all of the processes that happen that need to be added up for that to work. So now what we need to do is put the numbers in. So that gives us minus 2526 kilojoules per mole to the minus 3. So moving on to the next page. It asks you to explain why the lattice enthalpy of NABR is much less exothermic than that of MgCl2. That's uh, a similar kind of one to the one we did earlier, isn't it? Except this time they wanted to come at it um, from a slightly different angle. Why one is less exothermic than another instead of why one is more exothermic. So our wording has to reflect that. The first thing you do is you make a statement about the comparative radii of both of the sets of ions. So you say that sodium plus has a larger radius than Mg2 plus and Br minus has a larger radius than Cl minus. And if you wanted to put the reasons in, you could do just to clarify what you're saying. Now what you've got to do is make a decision. So why is the attraction uh, in MgCl2 much more than the attraction between uh, Na and Br, Na plus and Br minus in sodium bromide. So it's a question of putting that idea into words. Sodium plus has a lower charge than Mg2 plus, so smaller cationic radius, cationic meaning the positively charged ions only, and greater charge difference between cations and anions in MgCl2 both leads to stronger ionic attraction. You could have said the opposite about NABR. So let's look at the final question. So if we bring the page down. At 298K, the enthalpy of solution of calcium chloride is minus 123 kilojoules per mole, and the enthalpy of lattice formation of this salt is minus 2255 kilojoules per mole. And then as the enthalpy of hydration, <coughs> which tells you, sorry, the enthalpy of hydration of the calcium ion is minus 1650. They want you to write equations, not write it in words, write in equations. And that's to illustrate the terms. So let's get those down first. So we're writing out that, for, that equation. We've applied the standard enthalpy change of solution definition. For the enthalpy of lattice formation... So this time we've used the formation of one mole of a solid ionic lattice, sorry, a solid ionic compound from its constituent gaseous ions under standard conditions. So in the third example, we've done Ca2 plus 
plus AQ. That means uh, water being used as a solvent. Because what we're doing is applying the formation of one mole of gaseous or isolated gaseous ions being dissolved in water, forming one mole of aqueous ions under standard conditions. So we're applying every single time the actual definition from the glossary at the back of the textbook, but actually writing it out in equation form. It takes a little bit of thinking, I know, but it's worth um, thinking it through before you can commit it to paper. Okay, so now they want us to use the data to determine the enthalpy of hydration of the chloride ion. So let's now think about how we're going to do this. It's best to use a born haber cycle. So it's, then, it's important to look at the, uh, the sign of the enthalpy of solution. It's actually uh, negative, so it's exothermic. So therefore that has to be reflected in the born haber cycle that we draw. So now we've drawn everything out with the correct state symbols. Uh, it's the change in blue, or the blue arrow, that we want to try and work out. And that is double the hydration of a chloride ion. So let's put the other numbers in, and we can sort this out. So I put in 2255, and notice it's not minus 2255, because the lattice formation of the salt is minus 2255, and the arrow is pointing the other direction, so it's breaking the lattice up, so it must be plus 2255. So the enthalpy of hydration of the calcium ion is minus 1650, that goes up in the top right. And the enthalpy of solution is minus 123, so that goes down at the bottom. So now we have all the components to work out our indirect route. So it looks something like that. So if you let the hydration enthalpy of the chloride ion the x. We can now treat it as 2x and then solve for it. So by following the black arrow starting at Ca2 plus aqueous and 2Cl minus gas, you go upwards, so you're going against the minus 1650, so it's plus 1650. You're going back down against the plus 2255, so it's minus 2555, and then it's minus 123 because you're going in the same direction of the enthalpy of solution. So that gives you minus 728, but that's 2x. We want x, x being the delta hyde h of the Cl minus ion. So therefore, our final answer for this is minus 364 kilojoules per mole to the minus 1. Okay, so that's the end of this clip. Uh, hopefully you found it reasonably useful to help you go through those questions uh, that are set. So if you have any queries, obviously come and have a chat to me in class. And uh, if not maybe pop into a subject extension and talk to one of our teaching colleagues. So once again, thanks for your time and thanks for your patience and see you soon.